This is a completely unintentional situation that just allows me to highlight something. Right, so Rise and Ronan were trying to help me out getting the named backpack for Perfect Galvanize with crit chance, crit damage. We went into countdown because I hate doing countdown with just complete randoms. Having at least a few other people I can rely on is really good. The moment we loaded in, four people instantly disconnected. Myself, Rise and Ronan just carried on. We were like, yeah, screw it. We, it'll be fun. And uh, we had a random stick around as well who was like, uh, yeah, four man countdown. This has got to be impossible. But he stuck around anyway and actually did pretty well and then at one point he just went down one of us i think it was me i just couldn't get to him in time to pick him up and rather than revive or wait to be revived he just left so it ended up being a three-man countdown spoiler alert we did it killed every hunter we did a three-man countdown on heroic now i'm not gonna say it was easy i struggled with the dps side because i stayed complete dps throughout because i am playing on my solo character for some dumb reason so all i actually have on this build is just dps so i thought i might as well just stick with dps rise was chopping and changing in and out of a variety of different builds going from pfe to healer to cc to doing dps ronan was chopping and changing between C cc as well as dps we got through it thanks to their experience we got through it now lately I've been going on about like multiplayer and sort of like upping your build a little bit. Just because your build works fine in solo doesn't mean it's going to work fine in multiplayer. Especially if you start going to legendary. Simply just because of this really annoying thing called scaling. Now to show this, we are using Countdown as a perfect example. Because much like Iron Horse Raid or Dark Hours Raid, it is always scaled to 8-man. You go in solo, you're on 8-man scaling. You go in a four, team of 4, you're on 8-man scaling. You go in with 8-man, you're on 8-man scaling. No matter what you do, it is on 8-man scaling. And I'm genuinely surprised that only one person, DH, I see you, you are 100% correct. The difference between me playing in groups, particularly with things like countdown this example and a lot of you and i'm not trying to be like haha i have better friends than you it is just quite simply i get to play with people like rise who is considered to be in the top 0.1 percent of most accurate players i get to play with the crazy german ronan who has multiple world record runs i've demonstrated and shown a few times just the level of knowledge that this guy actively has in the game it is genuinely insane and i get it not everyone has a rise of brutality and a ronin up their sleeve however this does just lead into a very nice segue of my next point in pretty much every video there is a link in the description to the bro squad you do not need to be a clan member you do not need to be on pc you do not need to be talkative if you would like extra information just to look around poke if you're on pc i'm very active in the chats i'm not like i'm not like oh yeah check out me mr big youtuber hide in private channels and never play with people i'm very active in the chats so is rise he'll be in the chats and if he's about and he's free he plays with people like admittedly yeah okay this is limiting to pc but if you want your very own rise of brutality to help you through countdown or you want your very own dod to help you through countdown or legendary missions or raids this is where you can find us we will play with anyone and everyone want help farming a build we got you you want ronan to show you something weird he's got you we have Bo, who is a very very accomplished speedrunner he actually got me my fastest time in iron horse all the while he was trolling the living crap out of me i've never seen a man do so much trolling and carry an eight man raid solo essentially to a 30 minute iron horse run he can he is that good in the raid he can troll the crap out of you and still get you a 30 minute run we have stella the meta who is mostly when he's about because obviously time zones are a thing so when i say if they're about it is a time zone thing i'm in the uk 
Rise is Australian, Ronan's German, Stella is, I believe, Philippines. So time zones are a thing. Uh, we have Friendly, the absolute farming god. So many people that are willing to help, give advice, and just run you through things. So, like I said, I'm a bit surprised that only one person picked up on the fact of, oh, when playing in group, you can do X, Y, Z. And it's like, well, yeah, but your group is like vastly more experienced than just pressing matchmaking. This is 100% true. DH is absolutely right. I get it. But at the same time, like, there are ways in which you can get around this. I'm not trying to bully DH. He's, like I said, he is right. But if you want extra help or extra support to do a three-man countdown with fucking Rise and Ronan, for example, join the Bro Squad. We, we have PC players. We are getting more console players, and a lot of them are very established. We've got a pretty decent PvP group, so if you're wanting to get into PvP, they can help you there. Like, we've literally got so many people that have so much expertise in such a variety of different areas that, yeah, we can pretty much help out in most cases. So far, I would argue the only area where we can't directly help is if you are on console and wanting to do raids. Sadly, we will have to direct you to, I believe at the moment, our top three are GC Rock, Little Huge, and Nerve CYC. You can also ask things like you, they don't have to be directed at me there there is so much experience in the discord where if you just want to know something to say hey anyone know about this someone will get back to you it's just generally a very very helpful place now if you do join please do bear in mind that we are still pretty new to being at the head of a community i suppose you could say so we're still learning as well. Mistakes have been made. I am sure more mistakes will be made, but please do bear with us. We are addressing things as quickly as possible. Now, one of the best perks of being in Bro Squad is the announcements tab, where a lot of reputable and genuine and actual good players all have their streams attached so that you are able to directly engage with these people and get first-hand advice from their personal experiences. Now, this is essentially just a very roundabout way of me sort of giving a counter-argument to, well, yeah, but like your group is pretty damn stacked. You've got a Rise, you've got a Ronan, you play with Hunter, Bo, a few others. Join Bro Squad. Get your own experience, players. If you are tired of matchmaking, because it's one of the biggest complaints I actually see when people do matchmaking, is, oh, I've given up on playing in groups because people are shit. I'm with you. But if you're tired of matchmaking because people are shit, get your butt in bro squad. Find the experienced players. Find those, even if they're not experienced as well, because that's another thing. Experience is earned through failing. Find those that you can sit there and fail on repeat, but still have fun with and learn. That is going to be the key thing. You learn by failing. There's nothing wrong with failing, but finding the people that you can sit there and fail with on repeat so that you can learn is the best way forward. I'm not expecting anyone. I certainly didn't do it. I know for a fact Rise didn't do it. And I know for a fact Ronan didn't do it in this group. We didn't just install this game and just know these things about it we sit there time and time again and we fail the advice i've been giving out on the multiplayer videos lately is all well and good but the part that i have omitted is in order to do a lot of these things you will fail a lot the difference the main difference is after you fail don't quit I believe it's actually from a Disney movie and it's some of the best advice I've ever heard. You try, you fail, you try, you fail, but the only true failure is when you stop trying. This is actually a, well, my wife would call it a toxic trait and it's the one that she absolutely hates about me. See, when we play video games together, we'll go do like a mission or something. If we fail it, that's her done. She wants to now go do something different. I personally will sit there for four hours straight 
beating my head against that brick wall, trying so many different things to get me through it. What can I do to improve my play? What can I do to change this up? If I do this, the enemy does that. That's great, good information. But when the enemy does that, I'm fucked. What can I do so that the enemy does something in this situation that allows me to perform better? If you want to fail more, but learn by doing it, Bro Squad is the place to be. There's also no strings attached, like I said. We have people in Bro Squad that have never said a word. Like, I don't know who they are. They're in Bro Squad. They don't say a damn thing. They just sit there and read everything. That is perfectly fine. If you want to talk, you can talk. If you want to type, you can type. If you want to just sit there and just listen and read, that is perfectly fine. Anyway, as you can see, we've been on the three-man countdown for a while now. We are pushing towards extraction. Our goal here is to get the hunters, call for the heli, and then get out. I believe at this point, Ryze has put on his PFE build so that he can just run around and try and act as a tanky distraction as much as possible. And Ronan and I are just going to try and DPS our way through it, supporting Ryze by getting rid of reds and purples first. However, we're in countdown, so pretty much everything's a yellow. So we're going to focus on the non-elites first, since they are going to be the only ones that can really do measurable damage to Ryze. And then we're going to focus on the enemies that are closest to him or can do the largest damage. This includes snipers, grenadiers, as well as the hunters. And from there, we can just leapfrog forward. Ryze moves forward, grabs as much aggro as possible because of where he is closer. Hopefully the enemies will grab him as the aggro and then we can push off around him. Once we're able to push off around him, we split up in different directions, meaning that even if the enemies do go into cover, as long as we do correct, accurate callouts, we can always shoot the enemies regardless of the angle that they are at or what they are hiding behind. As you can see here, I'm getting the high ground and I'm going to push this grenadier as well as the hunter. Ronan is going to push through the middle, trying to split them all up. And then Rise is going to go around the other side, essentially forming a pincer move. This forces the enemies into the middle out of all of their cover and allows us to get the maximum amount of DPS on them. Where Ronan and I are both running St. Elmo's, it does allow for a little bit of CC, especially if we time it right. It does mean that once we burn the hunters down, we can proc the electric on them and stop them from using their armor kits. And this here is the last hunter. Helicopter has been called simply because we're three players. It's taken a bit of time. We might as well just kill the hunters, check the loot, and then bug out. And job is done. Have fun. Good luck. Don't die. It's bad for the health.